Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric, where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. Kindled will rise. Nameless, accursed, undead, unfit even to be cinder. And so it is that ash. Greetings and welcome to Dark Souls 3 and this is an episode that was long overdue. I've wanted to make a let's play of Dark Souls 3 or I would call it a playthrough because it's not truly a let's play. And what's more, it's actually a blind playthrough if you can believe it. Uh, so you might be asking yourself, how did a fan like yourself go like almost a year and a half by not playing this game and some consider it to be the best in the series. And the main reason for that is I have a bit of a weird relationship with games. And how it turned out actually finished Dark Souls 2 as a approached, uh, or at least as the release date for Dark Souls 2 approached, and by that I just kind of waited a bit naturally because I still had the DLCs, uh, and I just usually waited the start because that's a good time for the developers to patch the game, maybe concern, maybe fix some of the concerns that the community has, and just make it a bit of a more enjoyable experience, or at least how they imagined it. Uh, so I usually wait maybe like a month or so, and in that case it was actually a bit longer. It took a bit longer for me to complete all the DLCs, and in that time I wouldn't say the hype died down, uh, but I just noticed that they were announcing the first DLC for Dark Souls 3, so I was like maybe I should wait for that, because uh, wh why play now and then stop and then start playing again if I can just do it in one go. And that came and I then kind of hesitated because I guess the hype died down a bit. And then of course the second DLC came out and we're here almost like a year and a half later. <laughs> so. 
Uh, ideally, I did want to actually record this as the second DLC would go out, uh, because this is a completely, like I said, blind playthrough, and I thought that might be an interesting perspective for some people uh, who've maybe played the previous parts of the game but don't really know how the DLCs tie in, so just having one uh, whole of an experience might be a bit better. Uh, but there were a few things that I had to keep in mind as I actually went into Dark Souls 3, and the first one was that the Dark Souls 1 videos were huge, uh, just absolutely massive, 4 gigabytes in size, which is not that big of a deal when you think about it, it, uh, but it did take me to upload like four hours and that just took a lot of time so what I thought would be better because we we're just getting a new internet optic fiber things like that all the good is uh, I thought I might wait a little bit for that to come out so of course that did come down and then of course I start, tried to start to record and I did but they then I ended up accidentally deleting the footage which is also kind of unfortunate so, so we're now in a position where I've played through the first part of the game and when I say the first part I mean like the first hour of the game uh, so I know what's going on. So it's not completely blind, but past that point it is. Because I've managed to avoid basically every single spoiler. So the, f the first part, like the first boss, and maybe a little bit after that, the first part of the area uh, are definitely something that you can expect for me to, to have seen before. Uh, and I wouldn't lie to you by saying or maybe faking uh, uh, my, my expressions. But I will try to recreate them to the best of my abilities. <laughs> Uh, but okay, so the first guy here is this crystal lizard and I tried to fight him in my previous uh, Recording or trying of recording, uh, but he's kind of a nasty one He has a lot of HP and that is kind of a tone I've noticed in Dark Souls 3 I feel like when I played through the game for the first time yesterday when I tried recording uh, th There were a few hiccups that I've had along the way and I just noticed first of all of course how much faster the game is And I think that's obviously intentional and the second part is just uh, how how there are these mini bosses which actually have a lot more HP than you would expect in Dark Souls 1 It felt like you could either backstab or maybe cheese a lot of the bosses and maybe it's possible to that to do that here as well But I'm definitely sure that I just am not having the same experience I definitely think it's a little bit tougher at the start, but maybe I just need to get used to it uh, So this crystal lizard, I'm not sure what the best strategy is I kind of wait for his roll attack and then I go in and I just kind of avoid the rest because I think his Oh god, <laughs> because I feel like his attacks aren't really telegraphed that well, and I did expect this to happen because my shield is terrible, and like I said, uh, he does very quick attacks, and this seems to be a theme throughout the Dark Souls stream, just in general, is that these attacks that they do are just really fast, and they're really hard to predict, so you kind of need, I think, a different play style, which I haven't mastered yet, and I hope that throughout this episode and this series you'll see me either grow love to grow to love this game or grow to hate it, but I think it's gonna be the first one. Uh, just because I feel like the, the changes are necessary when you make sequels and especially changes uh, to something like the Dark Souls formula really affect uh, the, the feeling of the game and I feel like it, with faster combat and of course stamina regenerate, regenerating faster and faster animations it does give it more of an action feel maybe it feels a little bit more floaty maybe it feels a, li a little bit less deliberate uh, but we'll see how they actually manage to pull it off. Obviously, I can't know yet. I've only beaten the first boss. And I think the first boss is actually a, a great addition to the game and just uh, goes to show uh, just how influential it can be. And I think out of the three starting bosses, maybe, of course, the Zillion Demon for me is the most iconic just because I've fought him before. Uh, but Dark Souls 2, uh, I can't even remember. Oh, it was the last giant. Yeah, that was not that good. Uh, but in terms of complexity, I definitely think Dark Souls 3 nails uh, that feeling of introducing you to the new game mechanics and just showing you that the game is actually much faster. And I feel like Dark Souls 3 is also trying to teach you at the very start uh, there are other ways of approaching enemies and, and, and just things overall by not just trying to bash their heads in. Uh, this is, I, I, I think, quite an overarching complaint. Not complaint, but just, just something that's innate to the Dark Souls universe, is that sometimes when you use a strategy it feels a bit cheesy, but I think that Dark Souls 3 is trying to tell you, you know, you can use the cheesy tactics because enemies won't fight fair either. Uh, and I feel like that's, that's a good way to, to kind of show it by making the enemies maybe a bit more aggressive, uh, just, just a bit more unfair if that makes sense they're not unfair they just maybe feel a bit more unfair like I said until I get used to it uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it one more shot and just because this is the first episode I don't want to do a lot of cutting and editing uh, but if it fail I don't think I'll, I'll try again uh, but but I think we can get him down uh, the main problem is just that I didn't dodge in time and I feel like I should be more aggressive overall just get in more uh, between attacks hit them and then roll because just everything feels much snappier 
and I, I, I think that's the main part. The first time I was trying to play through it, I feel like I've played it a bit too much like Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2, uh, but obviously the game is much different than those both of those games were, and you just need some time to adapt, uh, I think. So <laughs> we'll see if my theory holds true if I, as I actually went through this. Uh, and try to beat him. But I'm kind of quarter of the way there, a little bit less. Uh, surprisingly, the very first time I've tried to actually load up the game, I've, I've found him as a knight and I managed to beat him in my first try. Uh, but as always, that's just beginner's luck. <laughs> Whenever you don't know what you're doing in a game, I feel like that's when, you're, when you'll have the most success. Games are just a bit unfair like that sometimes. The animations, like, uh, the, the main... Part, I think the first thing you notice in this game is just how beautiful and smooth everything feels and this is obviously just a bit of a consequence of us being in the year 2017 but also of the part of the the game developers experience with the game and just uh, they know what makes it look good and I feel like the animation the particle effects uh, the, the blood splatters all of that just looks beautiful and especially this crystal lizard I think it's a great design for a first fight. He looks intimidating, but also beautiful, and I feel like that's the best way to really describe Dark Souls. Beautiful, but intimidating. <laughs> uh, I, I think I can get two hits in. I think that's just my overall, uh, again, something that I need to get used to. I'm very used to just getting in there, doing one hit and getting out here, but it feels like you can get away with a bit more in general in this game, and I'll, I'll try to keep that in mind as I actually go through the fight. Okay. The club, honestly, oh yeah, right, one thing I did forget to mention is I'm playing as the Deprived uh, for no other reason than me being a little bit of a masochist, <laughs> and I've had a lot of trouble trying to use the shield uh, on, the, on the starting enemies, especially this guy as well, uh, because I guess I'm, I'm so used to blocking uh, from my Dark Souls 1 playthrough uh, that, I, that I'm just kind of, I, I think it's my safe haven, but obviously when you have just a slab of wood as your shield, it's not really, so I really can't rely on my shield uh, to do much of the work for me, so I just kind of have to stay at distance, I have to be careful, okay, I lost lock-on, seems like the lock-on is not as big, or maybe just the entire area uh, is, is a bit bigger, and that's, so yeah, this is, this is it, this is it, we're almost there. I feel like the crystal is kind of confused, like, what is this naked guy covered in mud doing here hitting me with a club? It's kind of rude when you think about it, uh, but then again, I think we've established that the chosen undead is not really the, the, the calm type who wants to talk it out. <laughs> I feel like there are much better ways to deal with uh, crystal lizards like this one in general, and, and the way that the chosen undead is going about it. Is, is definitely not optimal if he wants to make friends, but I think he just wants to really to roll the word or something like that. Okay, so now I am low at HP, so I should heal. One hit takes half of my HP off, even with the shield, so I need to be really careful. One thing I would like to note, maybe just from a story vice perspective, um, we revived here, we actually came as humans, and it seems that even when you're dead, you don't really hollow like you did in the previous games. So I'm sure that has some story implication, which I'm just not aware of. I really wasn't that big on the lore even in the previous games, uh, but I just kind of paid attention to it. I, I watched some videos, I just was, I guess, a bit of a bystander, not really a theorist myself. Uh, but I think the implications of us actually being buried in a coffin and coming back alive are bigger than what I think, or maybe they're not as big and I'm just making it bigger than they are. Uh, but, but that will definitely be something to keep in mind as we actually go along, and especially because we're in basically a cemetery, which, how, how appropriate of a starting area for a Dark Souls game is this really? A cemetery, just, just beautiful. I don't know how they didn't think of that prior to that. I was so close! Oh my god, that was... Ah, you, you saw me kind of go quiet there for a second. Actually, what I think I'll do, I'll try to fight him again, but I won't show the whole fight because it is kind of monotonous, and I'll just come back to you when he's actually low enough. Editing in the first episode, but what can you do? I feel like it would be just a bit too, like I said, repetitive. Uh, one thing before I cut and go and see you in like a few seconds, it's just how cool the starting area looks. You can see that there are rocks everywhere, like these grave and tombstones, just showing the real devastation and just how aged the place has gotten. So, so yeah, okay. Uh, see, see you, see you at the Crystal Lizard again. <laughs> okay, so he has very low HP, and I think I can take him down now with two hits. What I noticed is that Titanite skill, that will be useful. So that's it, really? No cool animation, he just disappeared. At least let me wreck all the damn thing. 
Ah, okay, fine, fine. It was actually a bit easier than I expected. What I had to do is just go via the old route, just to hand the club. And what I noticed, if you stagger the enemy, uh, they actually enter like a parry animation, like a repost animation of sorts, and I can just get up to him and just deal a lot of damage with just one shot. Uh, so that might be something that's worth keeping in mind. Sometimes if you feel like maybe being defensive is not a good option, maybe just try and being ultra aggressive and that might be... Uh, that might solve the problem, and maybe that's what the game is trying to teach us. Uh, so one thing I would definitely like to note here before I kind of continue the playthrough is that you can definitely expect this one to be a little bit longer than Dark Souls 1. And in my test recording, when I went through the game, like I said before, and then accidentally de de deleted the footage, I felt very guilty in some sense of uh, rushing through the game, and I think part of that was just due to pressure in some sense, uh, the pressure of trying to, to stay entertaining and trying to s show what's going on. I didn't want to like fight uh, an enemy for 15 on tw or 20 minutes at a time because I felt like that might not be exciting. Uh, but obviously, I feel like at the same time, that is kind of how I play the game. And if this is supposed to be like a blind, blind playthrough and not li really a let's play of some sort, uh, then I feel like it, it would be a good idea to kind of keep those segments in. Of course, I'm not saying that I'm just gonna like have an episode where I don't do anything at all <laughs> for like the entirety of 30 minutes and just keep dying over and over. I'll still try to edit those parts out, of course, not to make it boring. But just for the example of the Crystal Lizard at the start, you know, like this is something that I would have felt, I think, really guilty about if I didn't know <laughs> what I was trying to do with the Let's Play. But since now, I feel, after getting that test run yesterday, uh, I feel like uh, I know that maybe this is okay. Maybe maybe it's okay just to go a little bit slow and just try to enjoy the game for what it is. Because I feel like ultimately, since if this is the last game or episode in the Dark Souls s series, the universe, I wouldn't want to rush it and I would really want to kind of savor the moment and just show you actually how I played through the game and my genuine expressions and reactions and how I would tackle it. And hopefully, you know, that will be appreciated. But if not, uh, then of course you can just tell me and I can adjust the maybe the, the the content on or the length how am i so bad at jumping uh the content or the length of some segments so instead of me kind of fighting the same boss for the whole episodes which i'm sure is bound to happen at some point uh you can just tell me actually we want to see more than that and you know i'll be happy to edit it out and just maybe show my successful attempt and then maybe something else and in that sense uh one another thing i would like to mention is that uh, this, of course, only pertains to people who actually intend to watch this live of sorts, so if you're gonna watch this in the future, it's not really important. But the schedule, I had a very strict schedule with Dark Souls 1, and I felt like that worked because I knew the game and I knew what to expect. Uh, but in this case, I feel like if I have a strict schedule, I can really end up making some mistakes. Maybe I will rush through some things and I maybe didn't intend to, or maybe sometimes what's gonna end up happening is... Uh, I wouldn't be able to put content out just because I wouldn't be able to progress in the game. So for that reason, I'm kind of will have like three set days where I upload. Uh, so I'll I'll have like release three episodes a week. Uh, but if there is something, maybe I miss a day or something, I'll try to compensate it by another day. But sometimes, you know, what might happen is only two episodes, which I know is not great if you try to be consistent. Uh, but I feel like just just due to the nature of the game, that's how it sh should go at some points. But obviously, I don't know. Maybe it's gonna be really easy. <laughs> Probably not. So, okay, you can see that there's this guy here, and the one thing I would like to note is th that you see this black thing on, on, on the back, uh, this, ve this is very reminiscent of that uh, early cutscene that we saw at the very start of the game when we loaded in. Uh, it was some type of boss that we'll probably have to kill, uh, but, but yeah, I just, just thought that was interesting, it looked kind of the same, so I feel like the game is trying to tell us something. So yeah, let's remove the sword and see what happens. You could have been a little bit, a lit, at least a little bit thankful, man. You had that sword stuck in your chest. That couldn't have been... So we're just gonna get wrecked. That's fine. That's fine. I didn't expect this to go any other way. But I just wanted to say how unthankful this bastard is. Because we literally pulled a sword out of his chest. And was that joke worth dying? I think it was. It wasn't that good of a joke, but I still feel like it was. So yeah, that is the first boss of the area, and as always, everything in Dark Souls tries to kill us. Even inanimate statues, which seem or at least look that they are dead, uh, but in fact they are not. <laughs> uh, so Ludex Gunder, I think it's Ludex, maybe it's uh, Udex? 
Udex, I'm not sure. Uh, it seems like an I, but it just makes more sense for me for it to be an L, I think, and that's just probably because of how I think the English language works. Uh, but maybe it's Udex, uh, but, but in either case, I'm not really sure what he's supposed to be or represent. I've been an twice in my entire life, so you might think that this might go easy, but he actually is quite a challenge. Uh, which, and also, like I said, I think mechanically one of the hardest bosses in the game. Not not in the game, but out of the starting bosses in uh, Dark Souls, uh, in the Dark Souls universe. So what I'll do is, because our shield is frankly terrible, I, I feel like I can't rely on it. So I just should start dodging and, and just get good. <laughs> The, my main problem with this guy is, I don't know how many attacks he has. Uh, uh, because bosses in Dark Souls 1 and 2, I feel, have a very predictable s amount of moves. Uh, but uh, the, the enemies in Dark Souls 3 don't seem to be that way. It seems like, you know, sometimes they combo for 3, sometimes they combo for 4. And it's much more dynamic uh, th than, than in uh, the previous games. And I feel like it's a little bit more reactionary than necessarily knowledge-based, which is not a bad thing, because I, do, I think it does add a sense of urgency and action. Uh, but also, that's not to say that the knowledge is completely for both. There's still a great amount of knowledge that you have to know about the boss just to actually be good against him. So, like, exploiting some of his attacks and things like that. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> the branch transformation. <laughs> I wanted to be surprised by this, but I just saw it happening. And honestly, this is the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in a game. Like, I've, I've played a lot of horror games. This is by far the scariest thing ever. Like, just look at this thing. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And he has a branch for an arm. Oh, yeah, we managed to stagger him, which is exactly what I was talking about before, uh, that maybe the Crystal Lizard is trying to teach us if we are aggressive, it's gonna be better. But funnily enough, I think the second phase form is a lot easier than the first one. In the second phase, you just basically stand behind him and that's it. But I was glad I actually managed to beat him on the second try. Imagine if I died again. I feel like that would have been a bit embarrassing, but we did get through it. So let's rest uh, the Ludex or Udex. See, it is I. I think it's I, but it looks, or at least it makes more sense for it to be an L because it's capital, but whatever. Uh, so 7,000 souls, which is not that bad at all. And you can see that when we kill them, it says Ember Restored. So what that does is instead, I mean, Notch just makes our logo or icon in top left kind of embery. <laughs> it also makes us emit these embers and kind of charred. And that's such a cool visual effect. I think it's so good that they actually let us stay as humans and we actually see what our body is like. So it's not like we're just a, a bunch of diseased rotten flesh that's been set on fire and kind of covered in sprinkles or whatever, uh, but we're actually human throughout the game, but our humanity, or us being human, essentially means we are embered and we are kind of lit up. So I think that's that's a cool effect. And you can see the particles kind of floating in the air. I, I hope you'll see them at least. I know that uh, YouTube does tend to compress things a little bit, but I think you should be able to see them. Uh, so one thing that's also in this game, oh yeah, of course, last time I just kind of went for the guy and then this guy, I, I just didn't care about the guy, but apparently he's not a nice guy. He looked kind of depressed, so I didn't want to kill him, but as soon as he put uh, pulled the knife on me, he just went to town, and I was like, okay, I see how this is, mate. I, I'm not sh even sure if this, this is worth it. Homeward Bone, I guess it's worth it. Homeward Bones are always nice. I don't know if there are any cheats or dupes or glitches like there were in Dark Souls 1. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention that's very important, and Dark Souls 3 is just better than Dark Souls 2 for one reason, and that's ragdoll physics. Wait, can you roll them around? Let's not roll out of the, 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 the thing. Well, you know what? I'll just throw you off the cliff. How about that? And, you know, you too, for good measure. And then, you know, when climbers climb the Mount Everest or whatever, they see dead bodies and they're like, ah, people have died trying to climb this mountain. But actually, it's just the Chosen and that throwing them off. Uh, even a higher mountain cliff that they, they, they weren't even aware of existed in the first place. Um, I feel like I, I shouldn't kill them, but at the same time, I'm the Chosen Undead. I kill everything that stands in my path. <laughs> oh, that was a de double kill. Oh, I'm always up for a good double kill. Oh, there's more of them. Th that's also an overarching theme that I've noticed in Dark Souls 3, is that there are more enemies clustered together. And that is something that might seem uh, like bad game design, because, of course, uh, we are just so used to one-on-one -on -one combat. But just because of how much faster everything is, I feel like this is uh, a way to balance the difficulty and also make the fights more engaging. I'm not sure if I like it yet. I think it might be a good change, but I really have to fight like more enemies at more time and actually get different weapons than just a club to see how it pans out. But I think it might be a good change. 
Firelink Shrine. So, yeah. This doesn't look like anything of the Firelink Shrine that we're used to. And my biggest question of this is, is what is this woman doing? So she's the firekeeper, right? But which fire is she keeping? There's no fire. Like, literally, we're about to make it. As we stuck, uh, st stuck this cold sword in the, the ash or whatever. So now, yeah, sure, the bonfire is here and now she can tend to it. But what was she doing before? Did she know that we were about to come and do this? I feel like there's a reason and I'm kind of overthinking it and just making fun of her. But no, really, it's it's a very interesting question. And I feel like that, that, that you know... Like, what is her purpose? Maybe she tend tended to the candles? Maybe the firekeeper is just a general term in this universe? They just, like, light the candles up at night? Uh, but yeah, like, this entire place, the Firelink Shrine, just makes me think either this is one of the other Firelink Shrines that existed, so that wasn't really the only one, uh, which I think is probably the most plausible, or maybe this is, like, an alternate universe, uh, alternate thing type of deal, and this is actually the same Firelink Shrine, just in like a different dimension or something like that. Uh, so okay, let's talk to her, and I'm not really gonna speak to her, uh, because uh, she's not that interesting, but also I don't want to keep you bored, because I feel like this has been going on for too long. Uh, but what, one thing I do want to do is level up, and I think the first one thing I want to notice, and I don't generally like showing menu screens, is just how stats affect the game, and of course I really can't know, because I haven't played the game, so let's just kind of... Uh, go a bit silly. Uh, some endurance is always good. I think stamina can help us. Let's put in some strength uh, because if we're gonna have a club, I think strength is gonna be good. And let's put some health in because I also feel like health might be good. And we'll just leave the rest and see how this pans out. But I, I, it can't be too bad, probably. I hope we have some more HP stamina. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with my choices. I'm happy with my purchase. Farewell, Ashen One. Farewell, Ashen One. So we're the Ashen One. Good, not the chosen undead, we're the ashen one. I guess that makes sense, since we're made of embers. Uh, but I think this is a good place to stop the episode and say and call it quits. In the next one, we'll go to the next area, of course. I'm gonna show you around the Firelink Shrine. I think there's some interesting things to note here. Uh, but yeah, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you next time.